the worst pain I've ever experienced. Labour story. <laughs> So welcome to my channel. Now this channel is basically going to be kind of like a mum vlogging channel. So I'm going to be vlogging days out. I'm going to like vlog mum things, um, things I get up to as a mum and just kind of like day in the life anyway because why not? And I want Tyler to go out to be able to see this so yeah. Anyway before I get straight into this I'm just going to tell you about today's video. So today's video is going to be a labour story. Labour story. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to record one of these is because it was one of my favourite things to watch over on TikTok, just people sharing their labour stories. And I guess because I have my own now, I just really want to share it with you guys. Um, it's something that I've been interested in. And to be quite honest with you, I think my labour was quite a positive labour. So it's like, yeah. So. Hopefully very random but during my labour it just took so long that I actually started like noting down what was happening. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else does that <coughs> but I definitely did it. <laughs> On Wednesday the 13th of July that was my actual due date. I woke up at 3.15 in the morning and started having contractions. Now obviously this is my first labour like I had no idea like I didn't even know if they were real contractions or not but it being my due date I thought okay this must be so <clears throat> that was at 3 15 a.m nothing really came onto it I felt like I felt okay myself like nothing crazy was happening I just was having contractions and they ended up literally lasting all day so I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to panic because I also knew that I'd like <laughs> Because of like COVID, you can just be like, oh, I'm having contractions, go to hospital if you do not, if you know what I mean. So I just went about my day. Um, I ended up going to a little cafe in Sir, and I basically sat down for the day and was just having loads of food, eating, like talking to the customers because I didn't know what else to do. And obviously in the meantime, I was having contractions. And at this point, they were like mild, so it was okay. To, I could just deal with it. So it was Wednesday. I think it was on the Wednesday as well I actually had a midwife appointment and I had told my midwife about it but like I said that they were coming every 10 minutes and that every 10 minutes there's like three contractions or something um, and my midwife was just like okay that's fine like they need to be a lot closer together so that was positive I kind of went about my day because that was in the morning and yeah so just reading <laughs> So yeah, I went about my day, I went for a walk with my mum and my mum, like, we were walking around the village and I was holding Pippa's hand, like, clenching it and my mum was like, oh, are you in pain? I was like, yeah, she was like, oh, just get over yourself, like, it's just a little bit of pain, a little bit of spasm, like, you'll be fine. Obviously, she didn't know at the time that I was actually contracting. I didn't actually tell my mum until I was in the hospital. Um, so, that was that. We went for a walk and I was, like, clenching Chris's, like, fist and I was just it was starting to like get really bad but obviously not bad enough um so at 10 30 p.m that night we um went into hospital um and it ended up being like 11 o'clock at night by the time we got into hospital they basically checked me over gave me some morphine and some paracetamol and basically told me to go home because like I wasn't in active labor there was nothing they could do so I went home at the hospital they checked my cervix and <laughs> They said that the long tube is now short, so I think it basically like the long tube goes behind and then it comes forward, if I'm correct. Um, but yeah, so it was short but not forward and the cervix was still closed. So yeah, that's why they gave me the morphine and uh, paracetamol. I then had, I then kept on having contractions, obviously, throughout the night, um, so it was two nights, so at this point I was a little bit tired because I was just kind of having these pains, um, and then they were like come and go, so at three o'clock on Thursday morning, that was when I started having them really badly again, so that was two mornings in a row that was like crazy bad, um, and then at eight o'clock on Thursday morning, we went back into hospital, checked me over, and I was actually dilated three centimeters and I think that was at like 12 o'clock so basically what we did is we checked into my labor ward and then went to the restaurant because I felt if I had time I was like I need to try and eat something because obviously this is going to take a while like I'd already been contracting for like a day 
so <clears throat> we went into the restaurant and we were basically like walking around the hospital and obviously i was like contracting and people kept on like coming up to me and they were like are you okay do you need a wheelchair and i was like no it's fine like i'm trying to walk this out of me um went to the restaurant and i was trying to eat and all these people were like surrounding me like oh i remember i've been there before da 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 so it's a bit of an experience but yeah so i was just walking around the hospital because they always say as well like to keep walking it like just helps it get long so yeah so we did that and then we came back after we've eaten we went back to the ward and basically someone the mid my midwife had told me that someone else needed my delivery room um and my midwife kind of put up a fuss and she was like no like you're having your baby you need you need this ward and they checked me over and i was four centimeters and that was a half as two in the afternoon on thursday so that's when they class you and be like that's when they class you to be in active labor I think before I went to the restaurant, I was like three centimetres pushing at four, but they didn't really want to say four. So yeah, so in between that time, I'd got up a centimetre. <laughs> then it got tricky. I don't know why I'm doing that. So when they said that I was in active labour, they basically put me onto this, like I was on the bed. I was basically chilling. I'm not going to lie. I had my iPad. I had come down with me and friends. I saw some between the two because I was watching come down with me. And then I was like, actually i really want to watch this and i want to know what happens so then i was like chris can you just put friends on because i've seen friends before so you know if i'm screaming and like out of it then at least i know what's happening to friends but come down with me i have to re like rewind it it's so random chris like even to this day is just like please do not tell talia ever that she was born to friends um so at 5:45 on thursday afternoon they checked with me again and i was five centimeters bear with me so yeah at 5 45 that thursday afternoon they checked in with me again this is when things got a little bit rough for me i was five centimeters at 5 45 and i thought okay like again i've moved on a centimeter this is great but then at 10 p.m thursday evening they checked again and i was still five centimeters this was like really disheartening for me because I felt like I was doing so well and obviously like I, I just don't even know like I think I was just tired um and I think I was screaming at this point and like I basically said I couldn't do this anymore so I always said that I didn't want an epidural I didn't want a c-section like I just wanted to do this naturally with like gas and air um so I think for the whole of that day I had gas and air with me um so I got to five centimeters on gas and air and then when I was like I can't do this anymore they were like we can give you a, um, a cesarean um and I was just like yeah like and I, I, I had a gas and air and I was just like yeah do you know what just do it and I said to Chris I was like this is what I really want obviously I didn't and I, I didn't in the end um but they gave me an epidural I had to make a decision with the doctor about whether I wanted it or not and I said no to both unless I really had to I made the decision to have the epidural which was just really painful so yeah the so in the end I had to make a decision basically what I wanted to do and originally because I just said like I didn't want to have this I ended up having the epidural because I was just like it was just so painful and I couldn't take it anymore they gave me the epidural and let me tell you I didn't feel the pain because I was just like gas and air stood up didn't feel anything so that was fine um but basically the epidural worked everywhere but one portion of my leg my lower hip I every contraction that I had after that I could feel concentrated into my like that part of my right hip and it was the worst pain I've ever experienced like it was worse it itself because the thing is like without having the epidural it's like you just feel the pain everywhere below but when you have the epidural and it doesn't work in one one section it's literally concentrated into that section and i remember the pain and it was just it's awful and they tried giving it to, giving it to me again but it didn't quite work that's how i had to go forward with the um labor so that was painful all i put down is friday the 15th of july they checked my cervix at cervix at 2 30 a.m um and i was dilated seven centimeters which everyone was happy with because obviously like the hole's getting bigger <laughs> to be quite honest i haven't actually um wrote anymore and i yeah that was it 
I had Talia at 11.16, so obviously when was the last, that was at 2.30 a.m. So like nine hours later I had her. So my overall experience was good. That The bit with the epidural was a little harsh, it wasn't the nicest. Yeah. Bear with me. Yes. And to be quite honest with you, I don't even know what happened with those nine hours. I literally don't. But yeah, so that was my labour story. Or most of it anyway. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. If you have any more questions or anything like that, then please just comment below because I will be happy to answer them. Um, I'll make like more videos on this if you want or like I can talk about. I can make a video on either like postpartum period or I can even get Chris to come on with me to do a video on his side of things because you don't actually hear a lot of men's perspectives on labour because it's always from the woman. And um, yeah, just keep an eye out for the next video. See you later. Bye.